Last week, the majority of our trout had actually absorbed their yolk sac and entered into what we call the swim up stage or the button up stage of our rainbow trout life cycle. Now, it was extremely important that I began to feed these fish so that they could begin learning to eat for themselves because that yolk sac isn't providing them any nutrition anymore. If you don't do this, there's a good chance that a high percentage of your fish won't actually learn how to feed for themselves. You'll be able to tell if fish aren't feeding because they'll get really big heads that are completely disproportional to their overall body size. So we got some fish with some nice round bellies and they're really active, which is what you want. And actually quite a few of them have managed to escape from those egg baskets on their own and enter into the whole entire aquarium. So I think in this week's video, we're gonna go ahead, remove those fish from the egg baskets and introduce them to their new home. So before we do that, we're gonna go over water quality first in this week's video. So because I began feeding them several times a day to get them to learn how to feed uh, and introducing that food to the aquarium, as well as those fish starting to produce more waste, you would expect an ammonia spike. I have go ahead, I have went ahead and I have scheduled 10% water changes once a week, just because I feel like it's a good idea for me to do so. For ammonia this week, it's actually not as bad as I would have thought. We're sitting at 0.25. We know that that's an acceptable level for ammonia. Our nitrites are about zero parts per million. And our nitrates are about 20 parts per million. So those are all really good parameters for our nitrogen cycle. And our pH is still staying stable at about 8.2. Remember that's good, even though we have some alkaline water, these fish have been in here long enough to adapt to that. We just wanna make sure that that doesn't have any significant changes. So with that being said, I think it's time. Let's go ahead and introduce these fish to our aquarium. So we have them in our egg baskets here. You can see how active these little guys are. Go ahead, do egg basket one. Go ahead and do egg basket two. Try to make sure we get them all out of there. Let's swing around to the front here. You'll see these guys are still pretty dang small and they'll orient themselves to the direction of flow in your aquarium. So you think that's exactly how they're gonna do, that's exactly what they're gonna do in a stream. It positions them so that water is actively flowing into their mouth and through their gills so they can get as much of that dissolved oxygen across their gills for that gas exchange. Um, so that makes that really efficient. And also that's the way they would wanna position themselves because that's how food is going to be coming at them in this aquarium. Now, it's, they're, they're still pretty vulnerable to predation at this stage. That's why you'll see them orient to something fairly quickly to try to use that for cover. So in a natural stream, that's why you want a lot of woody debris, a lot of different size substrate to provide that extra element of cover for these little guys when they're in the stream. 